Welcome to presentation about transmission electron microscopy, which is well known as TEM. Let's take a look at the contents of the presentation. First, introduction, second, working principle and structure, and then we move on operating mode such as imaging mode and diffraction mode. And lastly, we will look at the strengths and limitation. Let's start from the introduction. TEM uses electron beam as a visible source and electron is transmitted through specimen. Here is the image about the resolution of various analysis. Quantitative resolution of TEM is not good, but TEM can observe very small dimension within a few Armstrong. Here is contrast between optical microscope and electronic microscope. We focused on the resolution difference. Electronic microscope have a high resolution due to short wavelengths. It is well defined in the Rayleigh formula. Wavelength of electron is shorter than light. Among the electronic microscope, TEM have very high resolution. Also, there is diffraction, so various analysis can be done. Let's look at the basic principle of TEM. The accelerated electron beam is focused on the specimen, and then electron pass through electromagnetic lens. So, we can obtain transmitted or scattered electron beam. There is three possible operating modes of TEM. First, TEM can provide a 2D image of sample. Using this, we can observe the microstructure, dislocation, as well as lattice fringe. Second, because electron is scattered to a particular angle, and this is dependent on the crystal structure, we can obtain the diffraction patterns such as Z, FFT. Lastly, TEM also provide the chemical properties. Using the spectrometer, we can check what elements are contained. The basic principle of TEM is an intense electron beam is focused to sample and the interaction between the electrons and atoms of this object form a detailed and high resolution image. This figure shows the overall view of inside of the TEM. Electron beam comes out from the electron gun and it is focused to the specimen by the condenser lens. Electron beam which penetrates the specimen is focused and magnified by the objective lens, intermediate lens, and projector lens. Finally, electron beam is converted to the image through the electron detectors. Then now, I will explain in three parts electron gun, electromagnetic lens, and electron detectors. The first part is the electron gun. To escape from a material, electrons need energy that is larger than the work function of the material. In thermionic emission, the energy is produced by thermal energy. There are two big criteria for the selection of thermionic emission source. The material should have high melting point, so it is never melted by thermal energy. And it should have low work function to make electron escape easily. Two materials are widely used for thermionic emission source. One is tungsten filament, which has high melting point, and another is lanthanum hexaboride crystal, which has low work function. The principle of the field emission source is that large electric field around sharp tip makes the electron are pulled out and the tungsten tip is widely used. It has some advantages comparing the thermionic emission source. Monochromatic, bright electrons, high coherency, and greater brightness. The figure on the left is the structure of the electromagnetic lens. It can be separated into parts, ion core, and copper coil. Current flow through the copper coil makes the magnetic field, and the magnetic field interferes the electron beam. There are four types of lens, 
condenser lens focused on focus the light onto the specimen. It controls how strongly beam is focused onto specimen. Objective lens generates the first intermediate image, and this image is magnified by the intermediate lens and projector lens. The left part is the electron detectors. The role of detector is to convert electron signal into the visible light because electrons are invisible to the naked eyes. There are two types of detectors. For semiconductor detector, electron hole pairs are generated by incident e-beam and the detector responds to it and amplifies it. Semiconductor detectors are simple, cheap, and easily available. However, it is not sensitive to signal change and has a problem with dark current. Scintillator photomultiplier detector converts E-beam to the visible light by scintillator. And this converted visible light is amplified through the photomultiplier. It has advantage with the high gain, low noise, and high bandwidth. However, it is not durable, easily be damaged, and expensive. Now, let's move on to the basic measurement modes of TEM. Usually, we choose TEM to observe the nanostructured morphology of the sample. If you have to experiment using TEM, you would already know that the morphology of the sample could be observed by looking the contrast between the sample and the blank. So what makes the contrast between the sample and the blank? The contrast mechanisms can be categorized into three types, mass thickness, diffraction, and phase contrast. First, mass thickness contrast can be observed in all kinds of samples such as organic, inorganic, biological, amorphous, and crystalline. Incident electron beam will be scattered more by thicker or high-density parts of the sample, resulting in contrast difference. Diffraction contrast can be observed mainly in crystalline samples. In crystalline samples, atoms are arranged in specific order and spacing between them works as slit for electron waves. Therefore, the intensity of scattering can be significantly affected by diffraction at specific orientations of the sample. In the middle of the images, you can see the transmitted beam pass the aperture and make the image, while diffracted beams are blocked by the aperture. As a result, contrast between the sample and the blank is made. Lastly, phase contrast arises when electron beams of different phases interfere with each other after passing through the objective aperture. Each transmitted and diffracted electron beams interfere constructively or destructively to produce the contrast. There are three types of basic measurement modes in TEM. You can see the ray diagrams of each measurement mode on the top of the slide. In bright field TM mode, objective aperture is at the center and only allows transmitted beams to pass. Contrast would occur mainly by match thickness and diffraction. In this mode, samples are usually observed dark compared to the background. In dark field TM mode, objective aperture only allows the scattered electron beam to pass. Same contrast would occur as the bright field TM mode, but in this mode, samples are usually observed bright compared to the background. In addition, crystalline samples are usually observed brighter than amorphous samples. High resolution TM mode detects both transmitted and diffractive electron beams. Phase contrast mainly arises in this mode while other contrast less contributes to the image. This mode would show the lattice spacing of the crystalline samples in real space. Let's look at examples for a different operation mode. On the left part of the slide, you can see the TI image of gold nanoparticles embedded bacteria. In bright field mode, you can see both bacteria and gold nanoparticles dark, and gold nanoparticles look darker than bacteria. So, hard to distinguish between nanoparticles and bacteria. However, in dark field mode, you can clearly distinguish between nanoparticles and bacteria as nanoparticles show much broader images than bacteria. On the right part of the slide, you can see the HRTM images of platinum nanocrystals. 
One 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 and one zero zero planes of nanoparticles are directly shown in the real space. Also, you can model the 3D structure of the nanoparticles by integrating the images with different tilting of the sample. Next, I will show you some TEM techniques are the most commonly used. In the diffraction technique, typically there are three types of diffraction patterns, but I will show you two types of diffraction patterns in this slide. Selected area electron diffraction, denoted as SAED, and convergent beam electron diffraction, denoted as CBED. Simply, it is classified depending on how to inject an electron beam. In SAED, the parallel beam interacts with sample and has a diameter of a few microns. And by using the aperture is located underneath the sample, we can examine the selected areas in the first image formed by the objective lens. The diffraction pattern depends mainly on the orientation of sample because the large deflected area contains the orientation variation of HKL lattice planes. So SAED is commonly used for page identification, determination of growth directions, and so on. There are examples in right figure. Diffraction patterns are simple spot or ring patterns corresponding to single crystal diffraction or polycrystal diffraction. On the other hand, there are some disadvantages in SAED. We can't select an area less than 1 micrometer due to spherical aberration and precision in a perture position and difficult to record diffraction pattern from individual nanoparticles or films. In CBED, converging the electrons in the cone onto a the small area of sample. Considering all the instant beams contained in the cone, the pairs of transmitted and diffracted points form a transmitted and deflected disk like right figure B. So CBD patterns contain the information about symmetry and thickness of sample, which is generated from small regions. However, this technique is limited to crystalline samples, and the focused beam causes damage to the sample. Next, in the imaging technique in TAM, we scanning, called as Scanning Transmission Electron Microscopy TAM, the convergent electron beam is scanned over the defined sample area and generated signals. We can use many more of signals in STEM by using selected detectors. Typically, there are three types of detectors, bright field detector, annular dark field detector, and high angle annular dark field detector are used in STEM. Bright field detector BF and annular dark field detector ADF provide the information analogous to TEM. But there is a big difference between TEM and STEM. The high angle annular dark field detector, denoted as HADIP detector, can be used in STEM. HADIP detector is disc shaped with a hole, and inner diameter is much larger than in the ADF detector. So it detects electrons scattered into high angles by columbic interaction with the nucleus. Thus, Rutherford scattering generated the image, and thereby atomic contrast called as jet contrast is achieved. Compare the right figure, we can clearly see the boundary between gallium nitride layer and sapphire substrate in Hadip stem image. Finally, I would like to conclude the presentation by summarizing the strength and limitation of TEM. The biggest advantage of TEM is the possibility of wide range applications. The operations mentioned in this presentation is really basic, and many advanced research using TEM have done in different scientific, educational, and industrial fields. In addition, TEM have high resolution around 0.1 m nanometer due to short wavelengths of electron beam. And as electrons react very sensitive with substances, quantitative analysis can be performed even the disturbance of local atomic arrangement. However, TEM is very expensive and high-level vacuum system is needed for operation of TEM. Also, for some types of samples such as films, 
TMs require extensive sample preparations like FIB, focused ion beam, to produce a sample thin enough to be transmitted. This can cause the structure of the sample be changed during the preparation process. One of the biggest problems of TM would be the potential that the sample might be damaged by the strong electron beam, making hard for accurate measurement of the samples. Thank you for listening to our presentation.